so much going on. So We're many alive. buttons. <laughs> so many, all the buttons. All, all the buttons. buttons. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. How is everybody today? Yeah, for everybody. Good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know if they are here yet, but I have exciting news. I'm hoping that if maybe you've seen them, I haven't been watching. Um, I have not been watching the, the tailgating this morning, um, but we are expecting in the tailgate this morning, the good folks from GenuCell. <laughs> so exciting. I know. I hope that they come. I hope that they figure out like how to join the chat because um, they wanted to be available to everybody to answer questions. And I have uh, an email that I'm going to be forwarding on to them because this comes from Julia Holmes. And Julia wrote us and said that she has all kinds of things from all kinds of our sponsors. But she says, most importantly, I have a subscription to GenuCell. Every 90 days, I get my plant stem cell therapy, dark spot corrector, XV cream, and immediate effects cream. I'm 62. I recently went for a facial, and the technician said that my skin was impeccable. I don't wear makeup. I just wear <laughs> lashes, brow makeup, and eyeliner, and I give all the credit to GenuCell. I wouldn't know about any of these products if it wasn't for you. Thank you for all you do. That's from Julia. I love she that. And she's makeupless. Look at her go. I know, right? Like, that's Fabulous. amazing. Fabulous. And uh, right now, every single uh, most popular package, 70% off. 70% off. Plus, on top of that, they're just going to throw in the hyaluronic acid correcting serum that they have for absolutely free. They're just going to throw it in. So now is a really, really, really great time to visit GenuCell.com slash chicks and i hope that they appear in the chat uh, at some point if you see genucell make sure that you say hi to them and ask them any questions that you might have for them i hope yes I hope do it do it do it and make sure you guys are checking out all of our socials you can go find all of those at chicks on the right .com slash links that's our link tree it's pink it's pink and fabulous <laughs> chicks on the right .com slash links um I do have a reason for my name today, and oh. that is because, you guys, I saw the sweetest video of Michael J. Fox um, having, I don't know what the event was, but there was like a reunion with him and Doc from Back to the Future on a stage, and um, Michael J. Fox, as most people probably already know, he has Parkinson's, and he's been suffering from that for like, it feels like decades at this yeah. point, like forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I have not seen him in an interview in quite some time, so I did not know how, to, I did not know to what extent that condition had worsened, um, but it seems to have worsened. And you guys, it's so sweet. The reunion hug is just so precious and it just made me like cry with nostalgia and so i'm making everybody watch it are you ready <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> okay here i'm it ready is. oh my god i love him you guys have no idea how much I loved Michael J. Fox when I was Look like, I was like in what, middle school, high school, when Family Ties was on. Such a crush. He looks <sighs> great. I mean, he, he looks does, great. But it's clear that, you know, that yeah. his disease is really taking its toll and right. it just breaks my heart wide open. Yeah. All it, the way it, is open. Pretty, it is pretty heartbreaking. But I mean, all for really, all things considered, he looks really good, I think. Yeah. I mean, he's oh obviously God. managing it very, very well. Terry, Terry has Parkinson's too and says it's awful. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> I'm but, so sorry. But I mean, sorry. it just, that just made my heart like explode because you know seeing them again like when was that the eight like early 80s oh yeah that movie, like that's i mean it's been forever. yeah like, it was yeah i think it was like mid 80s i think it was like what 85 something like that but seriously like, was it when you were a, when i was a young girl i thought oh my god he was like the cutest conservative <laughs> boy i just oh god, he was so cute you i guys. did love that show right i, loved it. I Absolutely know we loved it mm-hmm 
All right. Well, we have to talk about the fact that Kanye continues to make headlines. Right now, he is banned from Twitter and Instagram um, because of a tweet and a, a couple tweets and different posts that he made on Instagram and Twitter, which uh, a lot of people are saying are anti Semitic. I don't know how. I, I mean, I know people are trying, like Candace Owens, for example, is trying to say that it's not. Um, but I can tell you right now that I feel like whoever made the whoever would make these same comments on the left, we would all be piling on. Like, there's no question we would be piling on. So here's what he tweeted. Um, he said, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people, all caps. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Um, and that was after he posted some screenshots of some text messages he exchanged with Sean Diddy. P. Diddy. P. Diddy. Puff whatever. Daddy. Yeah, where Matthew. he basically said that Jewish people own him and that are they're telling him what to do. So these are, you know, these have long been considered very tropey kind of things. Um, and so, you know, he got the the suspensions on Instagram and Twitter and people are reacting very, very strongly. One of those people being Jamie Lee Curtis, who's promoting a new like a new horror movie, I guess, that she's in. She was on with Hoda. How do you say her last name? Um, I don't, I don't know. So it's like, she, what is she promoting? Like Halloween 54 is what she's promoting, <laughs> right. but it's, I don't know. It's, it's Hoda. I don't know. I don't pronounce her last name because it has like right. a lot of consonants in it. And I just, a lot can't. of consonants. Yeah. I like so her though. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so mm -hmm. they're talking about the whole Kanye thing because apparently when Jamie Lee Curtis saw that tweet, she also tweeted out to Kanye, please stop it. This is horrible. Like, how dare you? Blah, blah, blah. She's very emotional about this. And I just, I, Pulled out that part of the clip. Here it is. West tweeted um, on uh, just recently, and I, I'll read his. It was yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday morning. He wrote, I woke up to this. Yeah, this is what he said. In case people don't know, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. And then he goes on to say, the funny thing is, I can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have. Anyway, he goes on. You saw that tweet, and you responded immediately, saying this. Also on October 9th, the holiest day in Judaism was last week. Words matter. A threat to Jewish people ended once in genocide. Your words hurt and incite violence. You are a father. Please stop. I burst into tears. I woke up and burst into tears. DEFCON 3 on Jewish people? What are you doing? This is, it's, it's, I mean, it's bad enough that fascism is on the rise around the world, but on Twitter, on a, on a portal to pour that in as if Jewish people haven't had it hard enough, yeah. as if Asian people, I mean, everything everywhere all at once is a movie about yeah. an immigrant Asian family. I mean, if Asian people haven't had enough, I mean, it was just abhorrent. Mm -hmm. It's abhorrent. She feels very strongly about yeah. that. She seems to feel very strongly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that his words obviously were awful and he, you know, he, there are some anti-Semitic, um, there's anti-Semitic sen sentiment there. And so, yeah, he, it's awful. The only thing that I will say is that I, I wonder if she had the same emotional, um, response, like when Ilhan Omar said awful things and when the squad was anti-Semitic because I don't remember hearing that from her. I don't, maybe she did. And I just don't remember hearing it. Perhaps it was squelched by the left. I just don't remember hearing it when, um, you know, they, they did that. And so I, I just, it's interesting that when as somebody who, you know, all, all of a sudden I say somebody, when Kanye all of a sudden has like some right leaning tendencies and then he does say something that is anti-Semitic. They freak, which is, you know, rightly so. I get it because it, it was anti-Semitic. But when the left is anti-Semitic, they don't say anything. You know what I mean? Right. They just kind of sit on their hands and they say nothing. There is a double standard, right? I mean, they just, they say nothing when these, because I've heard a lot of anti-Semitic shit from the left. And then these people don't say a word. And these are Hollywood people that support those folks. 
So I just, that's where I kind of go, okay, but where were you when right. they did that? Where were you Well, then? and AOC came out to to rip on Kanye for this. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Oh my God. You're <laughs> literally best friends with Israel haters. Right. I mean, you're best, best friends with like, them. Like, have so you met Rashida? Down. Have you met Rashida? Have you met Ilhan? Have you met them? Because they hate Jewish people. Like, yeah. I mean, it's like who, you don't get, like, you get to just take all the seats now. So that's where I just, I mean, I, I get what the, I get what she's saying. I get her being upset, but it's like, then there's a part of me that's like, just stop clutching your, you don't get to clutch your pearls over this yeah. when you didn't clutch them that one time, that's that two times, that 18 times when they were anti-Semitic. So take all the seats. <laughs> well, there's a lot of backlash. Apparently there was a really weird YouTube also that Kanye posted where it was almost like it was undercover that he was talking to these Adidas executives and he was like showing them inexplicably porn on his phone. And they were like, dude. And then he was then whoever was with him um, was accusing these Adidas execs of stealing his ideas. And so now Adidas has their entire partnership under review um, because they're just like, what is going on? Like, is he in the midst of a, an episode of some sort? I don't know what's happening when he was on with Tucker. I didn't realize too, that, um, he said the name of his kid's school. And so now Kim Kardashian is utterly freaking out and is piling money into extra security for her kids. Cause he said the name of their school, like on Tucker's show. And so now she's freaked out that everybody knows where her kids go to school. There's just a lot that is going on with him. And whenever he has these kind of, it just seems like he has these kinds of episodes, right? Where he is out of control and saying all the things and then he retreats. And now um, it's almost like clockwork. He'll do that and then he'll show up in public with like another young hot model. And so that's what he's doing right now. So he's showing up with this young hot Instagram model and they're seen all over town together in the midst of all of this chaos that he's created on social media. And I just, I don't know what to make of any of it. I'm not going to pretend I do because I don't at all. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't either. I, don't, I mean, I, I will say that some of the stuff he said the other day made some sense. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. He I mean, some, he, he, made, he made a lot of sense. Right. And then he doesn't. Right. Like, so that right. whole tweet with the. Death Con three. I was just like, what are you, what a, what are you saying? <laughs> right. And he so, made, right. He made some sense, and then he doesn't. And, and so then it's he like, make some sense. Right. Yeah. That's that. That's Kanye, anyway, right? That's Kanye. Exactly. Right. And so he probably shouldn't run for president. You know what I mean? Well, and he he said on Tucker that he absolutely. It's not even an if thing. It's a when. Like yeah, he's I don't like think, when I am president, I'm going to do X Y. Let's just not do that, you guys. Okay. <laughs> let's just not. Let's not do that. Just not. <laughs> Can we just not? Let's just stick with somebody like a DeSantis or somebody like that. You know what I mean? Yes, Let's just please. not do the Kanye thing. Can we just all agree we're not going to do that? Okay. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, I just, he has his ups, he has his downs. Like, it's okay. We can agree on that, but let's just not. Let's not do that. Let's not make him be president. Okay. Speaking right. of governor <laughs> DeSantis, his wife, you guys, yeah. this perfect angel. Uh, she released an ad for his campaign yesterday that is, it, it went viral for all the right reasons. It's such a powerful ad. And what I love most about it is how totally casual she is. She is She's literally sitting, sitting Indian, Indian can style. You say, can you say Indian style? Yeah, can, can you say, say that? that? Crisscross applesauce. I say Indian style. That's I how too. I grew up with it. I do and too. she's just sitting on the couch and she's just talking about her man. And he, so he, he retweeted it and just said, I love you, Casey. And I was just like, I love them so much. It hurts. Yeah, they're cute. So if they're you cute. haven't seen the ad, uh, here it is. All the time. Who is Ron DeSantis? He's the kid who grew up right here in Florida, working his tail off, paying his own way through school, then volunteering to serve in the Navy and deploying to Iraq. He's the man who I fell in love with from the moment we met. And he's the dad of three very rambunctious, energetic children. Mamie, our two-year-old little comedian, Madison, our beautiful, sweet five-year-old, and Mason, our four-year-old athlete. But if you want to know who Ron DeSantis really is, when I was diagnosed with cancer and I was facing the battle for my life, he was the dad who took care of my children when I couldn't. He was there to pick me off of the ground when I literally could not stand. 
He was there to fight for me when I didn't have the strength to fight for myself. That is who Ron DeSantis is. Oh, dang. dang that was powerful. That was Ooh. powerful, right? Right. Jeez. Yeah. And you know what I noticed, too, is that she said his name the way that I always thought it was said. Like, she says DeSantis. So I was very relieved about that. Because remember how I freaked out that I'd been pronouncing it wrong? Right. Because he says DeSantis. Uh-huh. And so she doesn't. She says DeSantis just like I thought. So I'm sticking yeah. with her. <laughs> <laughs> We're going with Casey. <laughs> We're going to go with her. We're yeah. just going to go with that pronunciation. So. Yeah, that was that was a really great ad. That was yeah. really great. So, mm -hmm. so and he has so not changed. Good. He looks exactly like he did right? when he was a little boy. I mean, just bigger, you know? <laughs> just remarkable. I, know. I just love that family so yeah. much. Love yeah, they them. are they are a really neat family, you know. So they would he would make a great president. He would make so a great so, president. He really guys. would. I mean, I'm not even as like gaga over him as Mock is, but I I mean I look at that family and I'm like, seriously, you can't there's not a lot of baggage there, you guys. There's none. There's yeah. zero percent baggage. There are no bags. There's right. not even carry on. There's, there's nothing. <laughs> There's just not a lot of stuff there. He's a great guy. He's a great leader. Great wife. Great kids. I mean, come okay. on. Yeah. <laughs> and he's led Florida out right. of this. Uh, I mean, not, they're not out of the woods in, in terms of the damage of the hurricane. But man, everything that he is doing is such an example for how to lead. Right. right. And Put one of the other things that everybody should be doing is leading their own households in preparation for any disaster. And I'm not talking just hurricanes. I'm talking about like you know, the end of the world, um, World War Three. <laughs> no zombies. big deal. You don't know. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you don't know what's yeah. coming. Yeah. But you're going to be prepared if you stock up with our friends at My Patriot Supply. They have everything that you could ever need in terms of disaster recovery and emergency preparedness. Um, but right now, they are really wanting to focus on their emergency food kits. And that's a great thing to have on the at the ready because they store for 25 years and it's delicious and you can get 20 percent off of every three-month emergency food kit you, you get so you can get a three-month food kit for every single member of your family you're going to get 20 percent off of every single one when you go to prepare with the chicks.com prepare with the chicks.com yes and make sure you check out our website at chicks on the right.com that's where you can find all the things all of them all the things <laughs> on the right.com we have great writers too you guys including us yeah we so do check it out mm -hmm. so kamala does not have time to get to the border that would be crazy uh but she does have time to get to the late night talk shows you guys can you so, even can you <laughs> even cannot, with this? i cannot I, know, I swear this woman Ugh. so um Kamala was asked, and she's actually talked about this now a couple times. Everybody heard Joe Biden do the thing where he was like buying votes, essentially, by saying, I'm going to release and I'm going to pardon everybody that is in prison for federal crimes of possession. And so she has been spinning that same narrative, even though she is personally responsible for a whole bunch of people in California being in prison for almost, possession. Almost 2,000. I mean, yeah, you can't upwards make of two thousand up. people, right? And then she's up there like, "Oh, look at what we're gonna do! <laughs> it's so great! Oh my, oh my god. god! Like right? it's just the ultimate in hypocrisy. It's crazy. How could she do that? How could she get up on a stage and say all that with a straight face? Well, worse, how do people not push back? How right. are they so irresponsible that they don't say, "But didn't you like didn't you have do that? something to do with that? Right. Like, didn't she make that? a career out of that? Right? Yeah. And and they I won't. They're just like you're." cool yeah yay <laughs> yay pot <laughs> yeah so here she is i think this is seth myers i think that's the um late night show that she was with talking about that very issue watch you know we've tried over the years but i w let me just start with saying this i strongly believe in the and the majority of americans I agree uh, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed right really? oh my god Right. And so we start with that. And then we are, to your point, urging and the president has been very clear. We're urging governors and states to take our lead and to pardon people who have been criminalized for possession of marijuana. <laughs> oh, my God. Nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed, except for the almost 2000 people that did when I was, you know, in charge. Can you was even? that wrong? 
Is, is that it, frowned like, upon? Yeah. I mean, it, can you even with this chick? I, it's I know. Just, I know. And I know this is out of order and I'm not doing my pillow talks right now. I am going to share my screen to share one though that is related to this very issue because this is a complete scam. This whole thing that Joe Biden is doing with the pardoning people with this federal uh, possession charge, it is a scam. And I think this is so, so well told by someone who is actually an expert on this. Watch. I'm announcing a pardon for all prior federal offense, federal offenses for the civil possession of marijuana. You know how when someone is a liar, you just kind of expect them to lie? Um, but this man's getting really good at it because I guarantee he bought a lot of votes by saying what he just said. But anyone who is a police officer who works in the field of law law enforcement will know that this was a lie. Um, I am a prior MP. I am an army veteran. And I can tell you right now that there is no such thing. There's no such thing as a federal conviction for simple possession of marijuana. Simple possession is anything under an ounce and is a state or county offense. And you will spend time at a state penitentiary, but it is not on a federal level. He stated that he's not pardoning anything over an ounce, hence why he said very specifically, simple possession. He did that on purpose. If you were to load up your trunk with marijuana and cross state lines, that is considered a, considered a federal offense, but it is a trafficking offense. There is no one in federal prison for simple possession. He's not pardoning anyone. He is a liar who panders for votes from the ignorant. He plays on the ignorance of the people. And why would you know this information? Why would everyone know this? You, you don't. But as someone who worked in law enforcement, please take this little slice of knowledge and spread it everywhere. Because I promise what they're going to do is silence anyone who actually does know the truth. They're going to cut our algorithms. They're going to uh, silence us and cancel us so that we cannot communicate with each other. So spread this around as much as you can. He is pandering for votes. He is a liar. No one was pardoned. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow is right. Wow. It's, yeah. just, it's just constant BS and lies from yep. this administration. And they're scrambling because he's failing every place else, right? He can't run on the economy. He can't run on the fact that we're safe in this country right. and that we're free from crime, you know, because that, that is the world. Oh, my God. Right. We Exactly. And that we're not on the verge of war. Right. I mean, we're spiraling out of control when it comes to being safe. Nobody's safe in this country. He can't run on anything. His record sucks. And everybody knows it. Democrats, too. Democrats will not even stand next to that guy. Because they're like, oh, my God, no, I don't want anything to do with them. So what does he do? He panders. Mm. He says, oh, I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to and I'm going to do all this stuff. I mean, it's like he, this is what he's doing. He is so desperate at this point. So desperate. So I, it's, I just, it's unreal. And I don't and, think you know, the timing, of course, is of is what it is. Right. And so oh, that's totally, an important but, message to get out there. That's Texas right. Co or Texas Freedom Coalition yeah. is the name of that account. So if you're on TikTok and you can also spread that around, please yep. do because everybody think, needs to see it. Do you think it's going to work though? I mean, do you think that something like this will actually work? I mean, it may buy like a couple votes because there are dumb people out there and they may hear and go, "Ooh, yay, pot. But do you think this is actually going to really work? I mean, I would hope not. But again, we share this earth with a lot of really dumb people. That's true. You know? I mean, that's true. But yeah, somebody said make shareable. I don't know if I don't know if you can. Can you make it shareable? I don't know. Can you? Well, I did. I did. I didn't. This is the first time I've ever done this on TikTok. But there was a repost option. OK. And I, I did that like on our account. Right. But I didn't see it in our feed. So I don't exactly know how the reposting works. Got it. But I, I tried to. Maybe that just makes it show up in like other people's feeds. Yeah. So, but, but she has made that, uh, an option on that video. So it's, again, it's Texas Freedom Coalition on TikTok and you can, um, you can do that. That would be great. Cause the more people that hear that, the better, mm -hmm. um, back to Kamala on that late night show. She also talked about 
immigration and the way that she was teed up, you're not going to hear this part, but basically Seth Meyers was like, Oh my God, governor Abbott sucks so hard for <sighs> sending people on buses to basically your door. And so she's reacting to his softball tea, um, on that issue. And just, you are going to like, what she says is going to make your head explode. Watch. And they are coming here seeking refuge. Oh, and yeah. Talk about political theater. I mean, playing games with people's lives, like with their lives. You know, there were mothers with sleeping babies getting off those buses. And I just think it's an absolute dereliction of duty. If you see a problem and if we agree that, that we need to address it, then if you're a leader, oh participate God. in a solution. Right? When we were in office, the first oh bill that we proposed was for a pathway for citizenship, uh, was oh to fix God. a broken immigration system, which was broken under the previous administration. Then do it! Participate in the solution, because we are offering solutions. Oh my, oh my really? God. But instead, this really? gamesmanship with real human beings who trust us. Yeah, they trust you, Kamala. Can you then even? Take, them into your, take them into your freaking house. You loser. Seriously. If you're a leader, you yeah. need to solve the problem. Solve really? it. You're the freaking border czar. Oh, my the, God. The answer, your solution to creating a pathway for citizenship doesn't do jack shit about Nothing. the border. Yeah. Oh, my God. How about, how about close it? Close the spigot. Seriously. Close it. And then if you're if you want to deal with people that are here, I don't know, open your home. You're so benevolent, you're so loving, you're so caring. I mean, look at your bleeding heart all over the place at the talk show that you're <laughs> at rather than being at the effing border where you should be solving the problem as vice president. I swear that woman is useless. Useless. Absolutely useless. What a disgrace this administration is. Total disgrace. Meanwhile, sure probably we've got about Venn diagrams. too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've got reports all over the news. And you know what? Liberal news outlets, too, now talking about how our kids and parents need to be scared now because of fentanyl and Halloween candy. Why the hell do you think that's happening? Oh, it has everything to do with our open, wide ass open border because yep. our, our borders are is useless. I'm well, so very sick busy. of this woman. Very, oh my god! Very busy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You're right. My head is exploding. We have I to know. do something else. I cannot. I know. With her. Well, cannot. okay. I have the perfect thing because Thank this also you. relates to pot, and that is the Dave, Dave Rubin. I haven't watched this whole thing. I'm dying to. I'm going to do that today. Dave Rubin had Bill Maher on his show. And so I, I'm going to watch the whole episode today because I'm dying to see the two of them together. But they are so <laughs> high. They're like clearly sharing a joint, you guys. And so they're talking about they're talking about um, the jab and how Dave Rubin never got it. And so he's kind of teasing Bill Maher like, aren't, aren't you scared to like share a joint with me, essentially, because I'm not no. I'm part of the unwashed masses. And no. so the, his reaction is perfect. I love everything about the way that they talk to one another. Just watch. I don't want to change the topic altogether. I am, Go ahead. I am unvaxxed. You're smoking the same joint. Yeah, yeah, it could take you out at any moment. I'm so worried. What was your millionth clue? <laughs> uh, oh, you're unvaxxed? Yeah, unvaxxed. Oh, good for I you. I would not do it. I w you know what, what? There were a million reasons that I wouldn't do it. But then when they started pushing it on people for their employees, the companies for their employees, I have people that work for me that are in my studio every day, just like you. And I remember, I don't have a hundred. Remember it was OSHA wanted, a, if you had a hundred employees, they said you had to get them vaxxed. So I don't have a hundred employees, but I had guys in my you studio. You have enough to ring the bell. I have enough to ring the bell. And my guys are in, sitting with me and they're all young in their twenties. Bell and, and I remember thinking, I was looking at them. I literally said it on air. I was like, wait a minute. Fuck what bell. fucking right would I have to tell you guys to get vaxxed? And I was like, there is no, and I'm very proud that I, I'm not. I know a zillion people with all kinds of problems now. I cannot wait to watch that whole thing. Oh my God, I want to watch the whole thing too. I love it. I'm He's dying. like, no, I'm not afraid. And now I know I'm not going to have any like, you know, heart issues. My, my, <laughs> my heart's not going to explode. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> I'm not gonna... It's so weird how all these people like all over, like having like all these all these young adults, these really healthy young adults are having all these problems now. It so is it's, weird. It's really it's so weird, mysterious. you guys. It's just weird. They don't know why. It's a mystery. It's, it's a, a total mystery. mystery. No one's going to study it. I mean, God forbid anybody studies it. We're not mm -hmm. going to do that.
We should stop no. talking about it now because we're going to get shut down on YouTube. <laughs> so weird okay well then i'm afraid that i have to show you it's a still photo of john fetterman because it's just the audio and so they've posted just like his giant face is going to be right in your well, face at least, that, for a minute. at least that thing on the back of his neck isn't showing right i have to look right. at that i'm so sick of looking at that so he used to back in the day uh talk a lot about how much he loved joe biden how like they were just essentially super tight and, oh. and really you know loved everything about joe biden now of course he's so still not recovered from his stroke that he can he can't even pronounce joe biden's name oh. when he's asked if he thinks joe biden should run again here is his answer. Uh, Joe Biden run again in 2024. I think that should be a decision made by Joe Bin. And and that's it's not a matter uh, anyone's choice other than his. And and I respect whatever choice he decides. It's Joe Bin's decision, we, you guys. Can we start, we need to start calling the president that. We need to, from here on out like all of us let's all make a pact. We just start calling him President Bin. <laughs> it's President Bin, you guys. Hashtag Jobin. 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 Uh, so, and I have I think one it's more video. B I, I think it's B-I-N, you guys. B-I-N. B-I-N. Jobin. It's actually B-I apostrophe N. Oh. <laughs> so, that's... Jobin. That's really the... That's, that's right. I'm the, sorry. I got that wrong. It's, <laughs> it's B-I apostrophe N, according to Mock. <laughs> get it right, you guys. Seriously, get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, before we get to whack today, I have one more video to share. And this is a trailer for an upcoming documentary about homelessness. And as you'll as the trailer <clears throat> gets going, the point starts to be uh, getting made. And so I, I thought it was really interesting. I'm definitely interested in watching this when it comes out. If it may may it may already be out. I'm not sure. Um, but here it is. Broad daylight, I saw someone get raped. I was raped, bullied, picked on, oh. stripped naked, robbed. Yeah, somebody get stabbed. You mean like someone robbed me with a machete today of all my stuff? Yeah, niggas. Get Hit in the head with crowbars and bats. I saw you get shot in the back of the head. Somebody getting shot? Do they live? No. You will end up getting hurt out here. The other homeless people are like your worst enemy. These people do not play out here. Besides, I have weapons. I have, I have my protections. Okay. What kind of weapons? She's pregnant. <laughs> Bats, hatchets, knives, mace, tasers. And what's your drug of choice, brother? Uh, heroin. Um, crystal meth. Meth and heroin. Crystal meth. Meth? meth? Yeah. I don't know anybody that doesn't smoke. You don't know anybody that doesn't smoke meth? No. We saw a woman who was pregnant just now. Yeah, what is she smoking? Fentanyl. She's smoking fentanyl? Yeah. And she's eight months pregnant? Yeah. So are you seeing more people showing up in psychotic states naked now than, say, yes. two, three years ago? Yes, I think so. Uh, I don't know what they're putting in this stuff. I don't know if it was aliens. I'm not trying to sound crazy. This stuff no, 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 it's fine. must be um, causing all these, like, psychological breakdowns. And I think that they had put, like, a transmitter or something. Uh -huh. Because I was able to hear and communicate and it looked like I was talking to myself. My job was to intake homeless individuals on the street. I don't have to be on the streets. I just choose to be. You just choose to be? A lot of people are out here because they want to be out here. Everyone, I mean everyone usually has a serious drug problem. They kind of just kind of quit society. This right now is it's literally by choice. Did you get the sense that they haven't cared whether they were on drugs or not? No, def that, and I'm not trying to be like crazy with it, but definitely not. I mean, if we're going to be realistic, they pay you to be homeless here. They make it so easy and normalize it. Drug dealers are just being let go over and over and over. It's like the cops are... It's like they're your neighbor, you know? They enable them because they allow the open-air drug market. Open street dealing like that? With the cops just across the street, like, watching them? I think they've given up on the people that are out there on the street. I've never seen anything like it, and I've been in the game for fucking 30 years, dude never seen anything like it you What's, get more of what you subsidize right you exactly get more of it. and they they have enabled it i mean it, it is so much worse now than it ever has been mm -hmm. and it's because of well i mean let's get real it's democrat-led cities right yeah this is democrat policies in action that's what you get that's what you get Mm -hmm. the, and the more you tolerate it, the easier it is for people totally. to normalize it, to just make it a choice. Mm -hmm. And so, and then everybody acts like all surprised. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Democrats yeah. are like, oh, I can't understand why this is happening. We, right. we need more money to manage this problem. 
It's right. just incredible. You drive incredible. through some of these cities and you and you see that, you know? I mean, I, you guys have seen it. I mean, I've seen it. You just drive through it. You, I mean, it, it's it's happening in so many of our larger cities. And, you know, it's, it used to be that that was like just in a tiny part of town, right? You'd see that and you'd be like, right. oh my God, that's awful. Or like under a, in, an, in an underpass or whatever. Now it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Totally heartbreaking. It, it's it doesn't need to be that way. I, I just... I cannot wait to see what is, that whole what thing. What is the name of that documentary? I, it didn't say. It, it just said it's in a new it's documentary coming, coming soon. Coming so soon. I'll kind of keep tabs and make sure that people know okay. when it comes out. But I I don't have any more information other than what you just saw. Okay. Um, anyway, I thought that looked really, really good. All right. What is in <laughs> your whack today? Okay. My whack is it's not anything like super extraordinary. But it's basically I, I read last night on Daily Mail about this documentary, <laughs> this Dahmer documentary, which is basically like you know, everybody's watching it. I refuse to watch this documentary. I know that you've seen it. Um, and it's, it, are you talking I, about the documentary? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Show? Not the document. There's two things right now. There's the documentary and then there's the Netflix show. I'm talking about the Netflix show, but I don't, I won't watch either one of them. I just don't, I don't, I don't have any interest in the Dahmer stuff because I just don't care. It happened. There's been so much done on him and I just don't like watching anything on serial killers. Cause I'm, it's just not my thing. Um, but I know that you've watched, I think, have you watched both? Have you watched both? No, I'm not watching the Hollywoodified. Okay, there's a Hollywoodified um, version of, I guess, his life, and and it's like the most watched Netflix thing right now. They say it's right now it's the big biggest opening week hit ever for Netflix. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's called I think it's called Monster is the name of it, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. And what they're saying is that they're trying to make him. Um, some sort of a victim in this because it's a he sympathetic look at him. Yeah. Right. Why on earth would they do that? Like, that's what I find so whack. I just, I hate this. I hate that they're doing that. They're taking this horrific human being. Like he, I don't even want to call him a human being. They're taking this horrific evil entity and they're trying to gain sympathy for mm -hmm. this m monster, you know? And they're saying, because, you know, his mother didn't, um, let other people didn't give him enough love or whatever. And they're, they're, yeah, this is what they're doing is they're trying to get people to feel sympathy for Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, it's sometimes I feel like there are humans on this planet who are just evil. Mm -hmm. That's the only explanation mm -hmm. for the horrible, horrible things that they do. Sometimes you cannot find a reason for it other than the fact that they're just plain evil, you know, yeah. and they just need to be put down. That's how I feel about it. I don't know. You guys may not agree with me, but that's how I feel. And to have some sort of Netflix show about it where Netflix is making all sorts of money now off of the pain and suffering of these families. That to me is whack. I hate it. I want no part of it. And I think it's gross. And so, yeah, it is, I'm not watching it. Y'all can, I mean, you can do what you want, but I just wanted to get that out there. I think that's yeah, why. Yeah, I watched the, the three-part documentary series because I, I do like the documentaries about, I mean, just, you know, how I'm always so fascinated by yeah, brains and how they You were work. a psych major. I get it. I yeah. mean, I totally get it. And so, but I won't watch the Hollywood, like the fictional lie. I won't watch that because right. I just don't see the point. Like. I, it, the the horror the reality was horrific enough. I don't need any. And exactly. I certainly don't want to feel sorry for him. I will say that the the three part documentary that's on Netflix right now, and I don't remember the name of it, but you'll see it if you're looking for it. Um, it's all about the the lawyer who was assigned to defend him, uh, and she was I don't know if you remember, but she was like a young blonde thing, and I think he was ch she was chosen because people thought if they saw him next to someone who looks like her, like a blonde woman who isn't afraid of him, that it would help him through the court case, right? And so that was some mind screwing stuff as well, just the way right. that they chose her. And she was brand new, like she was thrown into the wolves. But the whole documentary is her tape recorded interviews with him. And so she talks about you know, you hear directly from him over these three hours um, of the series. And so what I I can tell the reason that they made that Hollywoodified version and the reason it was sympathetic is because he came to a point where he was just like, 
desperately wanting to know why he had these thoughts that he couldn't control. He, he, he couldn't understand. And so I think that's probably where the sympathy angle is trying to come from because he knew how wrong it was and felt this compulsion that he couldn't control and wanted so desperately to understand why. So that's why he admitted everything and why he told her literally every detail of everything that he did, because he was hoping ultimately that there would be a psychiatrist that could tell him, here's why your brain does the things that it does. And of course, he never got his answer because it's inexplicable. And to your point, he was just a evil monster. Right. Right. And you can't explain some, you can't yeah. explain that away. That, Sometimes you that just was can't. his brain. Right. Sometimes you, you just can't. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. And I don't, and all the psychologists and the psychiatrists in the world just cannot explain that. And for them to try to gain sympathy for this individual, I, it's you gross. know, it is gross. And I just, I want no part of that. And it's like, and when the, you know, I feel really terrible for the families. Oh, because God. they're a lot of them are having to relive all this stuff in a way yeah. where they're you know people are trying to get sympathy for this monster. No, did you know no. that he has a brother that changed his name that nobody knows? I had he's no idea. Like he's got his own family and he, ch but he changed everything about. I his can't even whole imagine. Identity, which I would do too. Like how? Which do you, is because his last name is Dahmer. Can you imagine? Right? And he probably like, how looks do you like have him. A life. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was much, he was like six or seven years younger, I think. Ugh. Um, but, but yeah, like he, he, no one knows where he is. And the thing that I was thinking about with him is like, imagine being his family. Now I would, I would assume that his family knows yeah. his background, like his, his kids wife. and the kids are probably, and they're, and then this thing comes out, these two things come out, the documentary and then this Netflix thing. And you know, the kids, if they're grown, they're like, should I watch this? You know, this is, this but is my uncle. You, how do you keep it secret is right. the thing that, oh, you, don't. you know, th well, you that's don't keep the it. thing, but, but it is, nobody knows where this guy is. Like oh nobody has any clue where he is. And yet somehow he's living a life and he's, presumably kept it secret somehow, but like how you, how, and uh, he didn't do anything wrong. I'm not suggesting that he ever did, but like, how do you live with that relationship? Like, right. I would just, Oh my God. I can't imagine. I don't know. I, I guess you could just mourn it. You know what I mean? You just, you just mourn it and you move on. And if you have children or, you know, wife and children or whatever, I, it's probably, that's probably what I would do. Because yeah. that is a part of your past that you just want nothing to do with. You bury it and you move on. Because, wow, that is, it's all just so awful. So awful. I guess you know? the part about the secret is is the thing that freaks me out the most. Because I imagine, like, say that I had married my husband and then he told me at some point, by the way, P.S., my brother was Jeffrey Dahmer. I would be like, holy shit. And then I would immediately tell you. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean, right. so like how how does that stuff say stay under wraps is the yeah. part that I'm just like, what? How do you I just wow, that's, an, yeah. that's amazing. And then you think to yourself, is there something genetically that could get passed on to my kid? Right. Like, I would always be afraid of that as right. well. Right. Yeah. Because you think, is there something in their brain that could be, you know, oh my God. Like you'd be watching your children going, Oh my God, is there something because you don't know? You don't mm -hmm. know freaking crazy it is freaking crazy yeah uh all right it's time for some my pillow talks you guys today is all about the animal duets because there are so many <laughs> you remember the one that i showed you was it yesterday or the day before of the dog that was like oh bro oh bro remember <laughs> remember you loved him oh my god there are so you many do. people making duets with him you guys it's oh the greatest god, thing love. ever so now, not only <laughs> we saw the pianist, right, uh, accompanying that dog. Now there is a drummer and a saxophonist who have joined in the duet. Watch. Oh my God, I love this dog. <laughs> I love it. So, so great that dog! Oh my god! Ah, uh, just want to squeeze dog, him. <laughs> Such now, it's not just dogs. It is also cats like this. <laughs> He's saying. <laughs> I don't know why these 
crack me up so Those are much. awesome. Those are so great. <laughs> Um, here's one, here's one of a dog that's doing some serious howling. <laughs> yeah, he's going, he's like nightclub dog, you know? <laughs> yeah. He is like nightclub dog. Uh -huh. Okay, last one, uh, of this series for today. Okay. Here's this is a the series. You have a series, you guys. <laughs> guys <laughs> they're little mixer machines oh my god they're okay. everywhere these people are everywhere <laughs> mixing One more animals dog. So one great. more dog that's not singing this okay. is the most <laughs> just, i can't decide if this is mean or just absolutely hilarious so apparently there's a black lab who's deathly afraid of cats <laughs> deathly afraid of cats okay and so for halloween these people put like the scary spooky black cats you know they with the arch backs oh, they so put mean. these like fake cats all over their yard it's mean <laughs> and then they coax their dog outside <laughs> and you guys he won't move. He is so terrified. He is frozen. Oh my gosh. Place. Look at how frozen. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's so one with the Halloween decoration. Oh my god, that's so mean. <laughs> that is so mean. That dog is not gonna pee for like a whole month. That's <laughs> so <laughs> Awful. He's never seen a lab they be that frozen. Like that is some serious. He just won't move. He's like surrounded. Oh my god, I feel so bad for him. He breaks, I promise. Keep watching. He'll be fine. But like, look at that. Maverick. <laughs> the kid's laughing. The kid's like, ah. hey, come on. Mav. <laughs> Hey, it's okay, dude. Hey, and then he starts tail. wagging his tail. Oh, God he bless him. He just needs him. to be led out. Uh, there he goes. Uh, <laughs> God. Uh, oh my God. I died. Okay, one more video, and then that's it. This is a the the chick that does the Kamala impressions, who's so funny. Wait, she, what? what about Tennessee Vols? Oh, that's right. I have two. Do you have time? Do the Tennessee Vols one. Do, the, okay. do that one. Forget Kamala. Okay. You got to do Tennessee Vols. The you promised me. Kamala All right. We'll do Kamala tomorrow. Tennessee do Kamala Vols. Tomorrow. This is our uh, our friend, Josh Mancuso. So make sure to follow him on TikTok. He does this whole series where he makes fun of the mascots and names of teams of different colleges. And he just did Tennessee, which is Daisy's university. That's my university. Welcome to Tennessee. We need some people to come up with a nickname and mascot. I'll do it. Oh, okay. So are you going to volunteer? Yep. All right. So if we, what? That's it. What's what's it? Volunteers. That's the name. <laughs> Maybe we should brainstorm a little longer. Yeah. We need to keep going. Nope. This is the one. Volunteers. You said I could do it. Volunteers? Really? I mean, what are we, a nonprofit? Well, I mean, there is the true story of the 30,000 Tennesseans who volunteered to fight in the Mexican-American War. Boom. What's up now? Okay. Yeah. It's a cool story. But I mean, can we go with like the Tennessee soldiers or warriors? Or no, sir. Got to be the volunteers. That's it. It just sounds like we serve soup. <laughs> What's wrong with soup? Volunteers it is. Okay, well, can we at least shorten it to say like Vols? Yeah, okay, Vols is fine. So I guess the mascot then will be like a soldier. I got myself a rotate coon hound dog named Smokey. He's gonna do it. <laughs> hound dog. Well, don't worry, we'll dress up a guy like Davy Crockett. What? Like Davy Crockett? Look at his hair. Making this up as you go? No, he was there. Where? The Mexico thing, amigo. Okay, that, whatever. Well, I mean, the fight song has gotta be about the heroes from that war. Actually, I wrote a song called Rocky Top. We'll sing that. Oh, he wrote it's a song. way better. What? Our fight song? No, we'll have a real fight song nobody cares about, but people will lose their minds over this one, I promise. <laughs> it's that. true. Once I had a girl on Rocky Top, half bear, the other half cat. What kind of redneck <laughs> is this? Yeah, I don't really know what the words mean. I just drank a bottle of Jack Daniels and roasted stuff on a napkin. Also we're going to sing it over and over and over and over and over and over yeah. and over. Okay, okay, okay. Every five right. minutes. That does it. I think, I think we're good. Yeah. Go, go Vols. Go Big Orange. Okay, you're done. <laughs> right every five minutes what, like there's anything wrong with that like that's it's the greatest song oh ever <laughs> i love that guy i love him <laughs> i love it <laughs>
That is awesome. Anyway, Go balls. Those are your talks. We'll show the Kamala one tomorrow. Don't you worry. Okay. You guys prepare yourselves for that. It's Tuesday. <laughs> bring it in. Everybody bring it in. Are you getting up this time? Bring it in. Oh, he's there getting he up. Is. It's Tuesday. Here he is. There, there he is. There's word. his big fat head. He's saying hello to everybody. Oh, there you are. <laughs> everybody have a great Tuesday. We'll oh, talk God. to you. <laughs> we'll talk to you tomorrow.